How's it going today guys? Today we are going to actually be continuing the collection videos that I've been doing as of late. And I know that we were kind of expecting the tech deck collection video, but I came up with another idea and I ran a poll on Instagram and people seem to want to go with this just a little bit more. So I will still be doing the tech deck video, but first I want to do this video where I showcase all of the obstacles I have all on this table behind me. It's kind of insane. I'm gonna be showing you everything I have, everything I use, and then at the end of it, I'm also gonna do a little walkthrough of my park. Seems like everybody's been thoroughly enjoying the collection videos, and I've been into fingerboarding for the second time around since like 2021, and then I have some stuff from beforehand when I first got into fingerboarding back in like 2017. So I've got quite the collection. You can tell by literally everything on this table. So I'm gonna show you everything I have, and if there's any all-stars or any standouts, I'll make sure to make that known. I'm just gonna start going down the line, and if there's any like large amount of brands that I do have multiples of, then I'll probably just sort this out by brand. But honestly, a lot of the stuff I have is just one here and there from a bunch of different companies, except for things like Black River and uh, Brewski Builds and stuff like that. There's some of my favorites right off the rip, to be honest with you. They're all either made for me personally, or um, companies that either don't make them anymore or are a little bit harder to find. Um, or honestly, just some really chase stuff. I just kind of grabbed, but this is also a lot of stuff that I use quite a bit when I'm not using my parks. First, I wanna start off with this little small baby quarter pipe. This is made out of concrete and it is from Chakra. He started making these around like summer, spring, summertime, and these are fantastic. He also has a spine that he does and it's just such a cute little guy and really fun, really highly used obstacle. Next, I have this little baby wooden ledge. This is actually from Goo Fingerboards. Um, you can't really tell because I sanded it down really hard because it had a few owners before me. So I sanded it down really hard um, to clean it up a little bit and I just put some of the um, uh, stickers on top of it just to give it a little flair. But this is really fun to use. I like it at my desk specifically because my desk is a lot smaller and I'm sitting down, which I don't normally sit down to fingerboard. So something smaller that's really easy to use, very fun. These next two were made by a local homie of mine. One of my favorite people that I've met since I started fingerboarding, his name is Taylor. You can find him on Instagram, it's TailsFB. He made this granite ledge slash bench. This thing is insane and very stunning. A little attention to detail with like the grass and everything, but he threw this together for me and I absolutely love this thing. It is very, very fun to skate. You can, grinding is very satisfactory, very smooth up top, so many combos and stuff like that are fun. This is honestly one of my favorites that I use pretty much daily at this point, as well as this bench that he also made. This thing is crazy, and I keep telling him that he needs to just make and sell his own stuff, but this thing is awesome. More grass on the sides. I really would like to put together some type of like granite plaza thing and this and that other obstacle would go so well on something like that. So it's definitely something towards the future, but these are absolutely insane. Taylor is fantastic at what he does. And honestly, he's gonna be the next loft, I call it. Next up, this is the only one of this brand that I have. Uh, this is the Dynamic um, School Bench. This is a very fun one. I think my biggest gripe with it though is that it is plastic. There are other companies who make like metal ones. It's very loud skating on it. So I don't use it a ton, but it is very fun that it was just a little bit better quality, but I still really like it. These are pretty important to me next. Um, both of these I got from Sausage Fest and they both are from Sausage Ramps. Um, this first one is actually a glizzy curb. If you remember the Sausage Fest video, if you haven't watched that, definitely go watch it. It was the first ever event video I did and I still haven't done a video like it since. This thing was sweet. This is actually a collab between Sausage Ramps and then E Concrete, which is out of like South Korea or something like that. So pretty insane. I think this is absolutely beautiful and really fun. The actual grill marks are, you know, indented. So it gives it a nice uh, texture when you're skating it. So very, very fun. And the next one is just the Sausage Ramps bench. 
This thing is classic. Um, this is honestly probably my most recommended bench. Tied for first most recommended bench and you'll see what I actually recommend about as much as this, if not maybe just a little bit more later on. But this is very, very fun. It has a metal top and then wooden on the bottom. Very sturdy, this thing doesn't move. It's absolutely fantastic. This next one is unfortunately something that you will not be able to purchase, but this is probably one of my most prized pieces in my collection because not only is it from a company that doesn't make things anymore, um, it is a paint job by a very special homie of mine and the subject matter. I'm a massive fan of Gravity Falls. This is from Fingalite. Fingalite? Fingerland. Fingerland. Something like that. Um, if you look right there, it's FNG Fingerland, I believe is what it is. Homie Shins on Instagram did this paint job. Dude is absolutely fantastic uh, and very talented, but he did this. Uh, Bill Cipher from Gravity Falls with these um, little fingerboards there in his, uh, you know, fire. And I absolutely love this piece. I use it even though I probably shouldn't because it's very sentimental and I'm pretty sure this might be one of the only ones that exists. So this is definitely something that's gonna just, you know, stay in the collection. Still like to use it. It's a great barrier. It has really, really good bank up opportunities. Sometimes with barriers, they don't have the ability to actually bank up to it like actual barriers do. So sometimes that's missing. This one has it in spades and this is probably one of my favorite pieces, like top three. So this next one, I just grabbed a bunch of like rails and stuff and then also two companies that kind of just ended up going together because I have rails of theirs. First, we have this uh, round bar that I actually have no idea where this thing is from. Um, I really like it and um, it comes apart a little bit so it's slightly portable, but it's very fun, good weight, doesn't tip. Uh, this next one is uh, EMA. This is an EMA round bar, very, very low. I like the rail a lot, but it is super loud. Using it when literally anybody's around is very annoying. I don't use it a ton. I think that's one of my least favorite things probably about EMA is that they are very wonderfully priced and very good rails, but they are so loud. Next, we're gonna talk about the newest piece that I actually got for my birthday last week. This is from Grindrite. This is a hockey goal. This is actually super, super fun. There's a lot of different things that you can use it for. Obviously you can hit the top, but then this back part kind of works like a pole jam. So you can do a, a couple different things with this. I honestly really like just putting a little kicker right to the side and you can just pop up to the top. Very, very fun. This is also from Grind Right. It's gonna be a little hard to see because of my shirt. So I'm moving it over here. Uh, this is the floating rail attachment that you can use for uh, Black River's uh, five stair, which you'll see later. I have one of those. This is super sick and I also actually use it on this park because there's a four block right over here so I sticky tack it down and it works super super well so this is actually really versatile and if you need a rail for a spot or you need a rail for your five stair that you want to swap out for a different kind of rail definitely pick these up it's grind right next we have this fun cheap little av bench that has been straightened out this is from alien outpost um, these are super, super cheap. They are pretty much just like a beginner obstacle and they're insanely cheap, uh, but they're actually really fun. I like using this a lot more than I thought I would. Um, it is 3D printed, so it's very smooth. You don't have to worry about waxing or anything like that. Just gotta throw some stoppers on the bottom and it is very fun to use. I really, really like this. And this was something that I hadn't tried until after being a little more introduced into Alien Outposts. Last but not least for this section, I have Teak. Uh, so Teak actually makes some pretty sick obstacles, I'll be honest with you. Um, a lot of people throw a lot of unnecessary hate towards Teak, but honestly, Teak has some heaters when it comes to their obstacles. Um, this kicker is super sick. It is very thick and it's like layered wood, like a skateboard. So this is a very, very nice kicker. And what I like just a little bit more about this one versus the Black River kicker that you'll see a little bit later is this is a little steeper. So doing tricks to fakie and stuff like that on this feels a little bit better. Next, we have the very awesome L rail. I'm gonna have to put it over here again. This is the L rail from Teak. This is very, very fun. Um, any kind of like grind and then pop over, very fun, pop it over into grind. This is actually super versatile for it just being a rail. Um, I even see people grind like the bottom section of the rail and stuff, which I don't know how you guys do that, but it's super sick. It's really, really fun. He recently collabed with a uh, mini skate spot, I think it was, and they made this little concrete attachment that you could set the rail on. It had like a bank and everything. 
it's on my list. I need to pick it up. And then last from Teak is actually probably my favorite Teak obstacle that I've tried. Um, this barrier from the Monument series is actually insanely sick. I like how wide it is, which you don't see wide barriers very often. Normally when you get to the top of the barrier, it's a lot thinner. I like how wide it is. It makes things like blunt slides and whatnot a lot easier and a little more satisfying. Um, it has a nice bank up, even though it has these divots in here and almost like you have to get your timing really right. I think this is a super sick barrier and something that I think probably everybody should own as a good barrier. So I definitely recommend this one. It's a decent price, definitely check it out. So next section, I just grabbed mostly Casper concrete as well as some random piece that I got from Sausage Fest. So I'll talk about this one first. This is actually from Commonwealth Builds. This is a very, very sweet obstacle actually. I love the L, I really like L or anything like slanted. Makes things a little more spicy, a little more fun. And I don't remember the name of this material on top. It's like some kind of stone, but it's very thin and very, very easy to grind on, to ride on. It's super fun. I don't know how much stuff he is still doing, but I definitely recommend following him on Instagram because if he keeps releasing stuff like this, I highly recommend you pick up some. As for Casper, I have a couple things and I definitely think Casper is, if not the best, one of the best concrete makers in the community. I think his pieces have a lot of personality. I think he does a lot of fun stuff with like different colorways and stuff like that. Casper is one I definitely highly recommend. First thing I have from Casper is this like loaf that's slanted. I really don't know what the name of this one is, but this thing is very fun. Like I said, I really like slanted stuff. Adds a little bit more um, spiciness to your clips. Some fun things that you can do from like a grind to like the minute you hit the kink of doing another grind. Like you have a lot of possibilities with this. It is very hefty and I've actually even dropped this a couple times and I don't think it's cracked at all. Might be a little bit of chipping, but that's about it. So very decent. The next thing I have here is this Jersey barrier bench combo. This is very fun. The wall ride side for the barrier, very, very wall rideable. Um, the bench on the other side, very fun. Nice height for the actual like bench part. And then if you're feeling fun and want to pop higher onto the other side, very, very fun piece. I really like this one. And the last couple pieces you can see right here, right here, we've got, I believe this is Dumpy Senior. I don't actually remember, but this is just his dumpster piece. This is solid concrete, so this thing, this thing is hefty. I absolutely love this thing. It's super fun to grind on either side or even make like a manual down part. It, it's super fun. I think this is one of my favorite pieces to add to just give whatever clip I'm doing a little bit of personality um, or a little more realism. I'm a big fan of the dumpy. And these last couple pieces are just some sidewalk pieces that I have from Casper. I think these are super, super fun and pairing them with something like pallets, you can make just like a ledge or you can do, I've like tilted it up words and done like a kicker you can do a lot of things with sidewalk pieces so i think if you are trying to make any kind of more realistic spot or any kind of more interesting spot for your clips i highly recommend you picking up some sidewalk pieces you can get them from casper i believe brewski builds also makes them a lot of concrete makers do sidewalk pieces and i highly highly recommend them this is fun for like a grass gap i've set this up and put like a bench down this side so you like gap the grass to the bench so fun endlessly endlessly fun and you can get very very creative with just these few concrete pieces so highly recommend for this next segment if you've been following me through all of my fingerboarding videos for the past year these are going to look very familiar to you these are my brewski obstacles um, the first video i ever did on this channel was about brewski so obviously i'm gonna have nothing but good stuff to say about these so i'm not even gonna like go deep into them just know that i recommend every single one of these i think they're a little bit pricey but they're fantastic and really detailed and i just love everything about brewski so highly highly recommend first one this is the aero vista ledge i believe is what it's called it's been a minute since i've looked it up this is actually inspired off of a real spot in california this is a super beautiful ledge very wide so nice for you know blunt slides anything like that it's very smooth. I don't think I've ever had to actually wax it. I think I did purposefully one time just to see if it changed much and I actually don't think it did. 
So this is honestly probably one of my favorite ledges that I have just because of how beefy and I really like pieces that are based off of actual skate spots. The next one is a collab between Brewski and Cowply. This is the uh, disco barrier. There's the Cowply seat. This is really, really fun. You can grind the top and then bank in. Um, you can pop over and down. Like this is, you can get very, very creative with this one. If you like pieces that look pretty basic, cause this is literally just like a flat mani pad that's tilted up a little bit, but you can get super creative with this. So if you like pieces that challenge your mind a little bit and make you think about like, not just like flip in, flip out stuff, Definitely recommend this one. This is very, very fun. And then my last piece from Brewski is going to be the Knife Collab Barrier. This is one of my favorite pieces as well that I own. This thing is absolutely massive. It has a very nice wall ride, but with this one, because of how tall it is, it's borderline, for, actually, it just is vertical at this point. So backing up to it, very fun. It feels huge. That's what she said. I like putting a kicker and uh, popping up to the top of the obstacle. That's very fun. So you give a lot of possibility with this as well. And I think just of how massive this is, a lot of places don't make really, really, really big barriers. So this thing being just, I would honestly probably say the closest to like actual size of a barrier. This one's really good. All right, so the last section of stuff that I grabbed is just some odds and ends and then a little plaza. It's pretty sick that I'll show you. The first two things I wanna show you are actually things that aren't specifically meant for fingerboarding, but I think are pretty essential and also just pretty fun things to have. So the first thing, and you've probably heard this from mostly everybody who fingerboards, is you need a stack of pallets. I got these on Amazon. I think they're supposed to be drink coasters, but they work perfectly as just an actual pallet. What you can use pallets for is raising obstacles to make them slightly higher. You can put, you know, like the sidewalk pieces on top of these to make like a ledge out of them. You can do a lot of things with these. I think it's super important that any fingerboarder has pallets. They're super cheap. I think I have even more than this, but definitely worth picking up. Next, these are a little more stupid, but as long as you can actually get them to work, they're actually really fun. These are some uh, toy shopping carts that I picked up off of Amazon. This one has its wheels still. There's some stickers on the front of it for fun. This is a very fun little thing to mess around with. You can grind the side, you can pop over it. This is a fun little thing to mess around with. This one, to get it to stay a little better, I did pull the wheels off. Um, but you can definitely, especially if you pull the wheels off of one of them and put some uh, non-sliders, it's a lot easier to like grind it. So I think this is a super fun, quirky little thing to have and adds a little bit to the realism of your fingerboarding. Next, this is probably my pride and joy out of the uh, collection. And it's just because of the history behind it. So this is the only tech deck obstacle I have. This is the uh, very, very famous red Tony Hawk tech deck picnic table. Um, I absolutely adore this thing. This unfortunately is not my original one that I had when I was a kid, but this is beautiful. It is an amazing shape. Honestly, if you want to buy one of these, even looking on eBay, they're like $70, $80. This is the most perfect picnic table you will ever purchase. I hands down. Um, it is the perfect size. It is perfect to grind on. Even the benches are good. I think this is the peak of Tech Deck Obstacles. This is the best thing they ever made. And they've done really good with these new daily grind packs, which if you wanna see reviews of those, let me know, I'll try and get on it. Um, they, they killed it with this one. This one is the best they've ever done. And another testament to the uh, pallets, it's fun to like put like a piece of concrete here, pop up and over and use the pallets to like slant the table. So you can do everything with these. And the last piece I have from this section was the plaza that I was telling you about. This is actually the Sorry for Fingerboarding Plaza, which I'm not sure if Nash makes these anymore. I got this probably six months to a year ago. It's super fun. It has this uh, little hubba that, you know, sticks there, but it's not actually glued on for a bunch of different reasons, but this is super fun. I'm a big fan of this one. I've done a ridiculous amount of clips on this thing. He even did this cool little drawing on the bottom. I love this, and if it ever becomes available again, it was like 100 bucks flat, buy it. It is very, very worth it, it's very fun. Um, I just don't know if he's gonna release anymore. And last but not least, we are going to talk about Black River. Now, unlike other fingerboarders, I am not going to sit there and glaze Black River and say that they're the best obstacle makers out there. They are definitely one of the best, but 
I think when it comes to obstacle selection and uh, variation of obstacles, Black River is the best. But I think there are a lot of people who do concrete better. There are a lot of people who do wood obstacles better or as good as. So while Black River is been around the longest and probably one of the best, I'm not gonna sit there and say that they're number one because that's kind of an opinion anyway. But I do have a lot of Black River stuff and I am gonna stand up for this just to make it a little bit easier. Let's start with the big boys. First one I have is the Black River Five Stair. So this is an essential. If you buy anything from Black River, I recommend you buy this, if nothing else. This is the perfect obstacle in my opinion. I am a very big fan of stair sets. Um, down rails are very fun. I like that this is a square rail. I know a lot of people prefer round rails, but I personally prefer square. And it has a fun little Euro gap right there. So I think if you were going to buy anything from Black River, you buy this or another obstacle that I'll talk about in a little bit that is a lot smaller. This is my number one recommended from Black River uh, for the most part. Next, we got this big boy. This is the uh, Black River 10 stair. I absolutely love this thing. Um, I think it is a little bit harder than the five stair, so I probably wouldn't pick this one up immediately, especially if you don't own the five stair. This one is super, super fun. I honestly find myself doing tricks down the stair set more than I actually grind the rail, but either way, both of them are very fun. And I use it a ton, but I don't know if I would say it's necessary. Next, we can move on to the smaller stuff, um, just right here. This is the... I don't really know what this is called. It's just a double kinked rail from uh, Black River. It does have that like powder coating texture on top of it. I do really like this, but I think it's a little limited. Um, I actually kind of uh, blanked out when I was buying this one. I wanted the one that was straight, not the one that was kinked. Um, it is still really fun, but I don't really use this just because it's not actually the one I wanted. I just didn't see it. So that was a momentary lapse of judgment. It is still a good rail and if you like kinks, it's fun, but I don't use it as much as I thought I would. Next up, two big essentials. We've got the pocket kicker and then the normal kicker. And like I said a little bit earlier with Teak, their kicker is a little steeper. So it is more fun to do tricks, but I think this one is a lot better for launching off of. And this thing is perfect. I think if you buy anything for just like daily use, it should definitely be this pocket kicker. This is not the other obstacle I was talking about though, so uh, let's move on to that one. This will be a surprise to absolutely no one who actually watches my edits and stuff like that on Instagram, but my number one recommended from Black River is the Street Bench. I bought this thing off of Kem's website, I'd say probably a year, maybe two years ago now, and I still use this thing every single day. This is one of the best benches that has ever been released, and I will glaze this thing forever because it is fantastic. The wood pieces are great. It slides like a dream. I've obviously never had to wax this because it's wood. The wood is held up amazingly. I have done full edits on just this. Like this obstacle is perfect in my opinion. It is perfect for learning, flip in, flip out, all of that kind of stuff. It is perfect for what you need it for. So I could not recommend this Black River Street Bench more than I could anything else that you've seen today. That out of the way. Next up, we have the Black River Bike Rack. This is also very high up there for me. I like this one a lot. I like this better than the flat face one because this one is square. I think it's a better height than the flat face one. So this is super solid. Definitely recommend this. I think everybody needs a bike rack just for fun and for a little bit of immersion. I think it's a good piece. Next, we've got two Black River obstacles that were some of the first ones I ever picked up when I got back into, well, I guess, when I got into fingerboarding in 2017. We have the brick ledge. This brick ledge is fantastic. Very simple, very straightforward. These bricks are very fun, but what I will say more than anything about bricks from Black River is they're a little hard to work with. Um, they, right out of the box, don't grind super well, and they just need a little bit of uh, maintenance before they grind really well. This thing has been waxed. The wax has been melted. It's been waxed again. I even think I filed this down a little bit to get it to exactly where I wanted it to be. So while these are very fun, very immersive, and the sound is very nice, there's a little bit of work that needs to go into these before they get to that. So just think on that a little bit. Next one that was very early was this Black River picnic table. I like this picnic table a lot, and I think as for the bench part, it is better to grind on than the Tech Deck one. But I do think this one is just maybe a little too wide compared to the Tech Deck one, even though I think they're close. 
I think this one could just stand a little bit of shrinking of the actual bench part. But this is super good. The coping on the sides makes grinding really easy. I do think I kind of almost would prefer it to be wood on both sides though. That's just a hot take though. We're coming down to the last two and these last two are super fun and I use them a ton. So I can definitely recommend them both a lot. Um, the first one is the Mike Schneider dock. Um, this one has the side rail. I actually have the brick as well. I purchased it with the brick first and got the rail later from, uh, I think it was Black River themselves or maybe Fingerboard Store. Just like the other ones and you can even see on here how much wax and how much work has gone into those to make them slide really well. So like I said again, bricks are a little harder to work with than wood or metal or anything like that. I do think this is the better uh, piece for this obstacle just because popping up and over is very fun, grinding and popping out is very fun. This is fun too, but I think this just has a little more, more flexibility. And then last but not least, this is a very new one for me. This is the SF or San Francisco stairs. It's super fun. I like the brick up top. This one actually did not require a ridiculous amount of work. Maybe it's just because of the actual way that the bricks are in there. I don't actually know but this one is still super decent. This one is very fun for like back tails across this and stuff like that. I think this is a great obstacle. I have also seen people before put like a grind right rail like on one of these steps so you can pop up and then grind down. Very, very fun. I think this is super versatile if you know how to use it. So definitely one that I recommend as well. So we're gonna switch to the hand cam now because I gotta show you the park, but I gotta move stuff off of it really quickly. So give me just a sec. But certainly not least, this is the park. I absolutely love this thing. Pure Joy, his name is also Steve. Uh, I have talked about him multiple different times. He made this park for me. I am absolutely in love with it. It is very fun. My favorite feature, probably this four block. Incredibly fun to just do a trick down like the four block and then keep going or do like a grind to flat. I do that a lot. Put a couple stickers on it, but didn't go super crazy just because if you're wondering what that is, I have an explanation. I tried to glue down some fake grass, didn't like it, so I pulled it back up, and I used super glue, so that's kind of what's left over. <laughs> Moving around to the other side, this is either if you're left-handed or switch. We've got this cute little four stair that then goes into this very, very nice ledge, kinked ledge, and then you can also hit this ledge to flat. Very fun, since I like switch so much, I use this quite a bit. I use both sides a lot. I think if I'm just trying to have fun and just chill, I use this side a little bit more. And then if I'm trying to get some clips or do something crazy, I tend to go to the other side. But, and then moving over here, you have two nice quarter pipes and then a bank in the middle. It's super fun to put something like a bench or a barrier up here so you can either pop up and over or go from the bank up. This side is really fun too, even though it is obviously the less busy side. But I'll pull back a little bit so you guys can see it. It's honestly super fun and it's pretty crazy to me that I even have a park. So I thank Steve so much for uh, making this bad boy for me. I use it every weekend. Whenever the homies come over, I'm always using it. It's very fun and I can't wait to actually be able to take it to events. That would be super sweet. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed seeing my entire obstacle collection. Had a lot of fun making it. Next, we'll be going into tech decks. So if you enjoy the tech deck collecting or you skate tech decks instead of fingerboards, this is gonna be the next one for you. Let me know if you have any of the same obstacles and how you feel about them in the comments below. And I hope you have a good one.